All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to open up and disassemble this Dell Vostro 5391. Okay, so first thing I'm going to close this up. Let me actually turn it off. Okay, got to be careful because the hinge is actually broken on this one. And that's what the customer brought it to me to work on. All right, we're going to be using, I think it's a JS1. Yep, and undoing all the screws here. Uh-oh, it looks like that one's broken. Hopefully it will come out. But let's go ahead and remove all the screws from the bottom. Okay, maybe they already loosened it or something, I don't know. Right, if the screws come out, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so there we go. We got those screws out. Okay, now that we got these, these screws actually, because they stay in place, they help pull the bottom cover up. The problem is I'm worried if this one's broken, I might not be able to even get this cover off. So we're gonna work our way around. Um, now that I got the back, I get my fingernails in the gap here and I'll pull on that, push with my thumb, just like that, going around. Okay, working my way around, just like this all the way until the other side again it looks like that screw is stuck so i don't know might be screwed there all right so we got that and you can see oh okay we got it out and there we go and you can see these three screws stay in place they actually have a little metal washer there that helps hold it in place okay so i'm gonna have to dust it out though it's a little bit dusty we're just gonna do a quick look in here uh, because the main thing I need to fix is the hinge. All right. This one, the thing that holds the screw is actually broken and gone. So I can't really do anything about that. Hopefully these two screws remaining are going to be strong enough to keep the thing from breaking more in the future. Okay. It might, it might, yeah, it might help to add some thread locker here. So I'm going to actually add a little red thread locker here to keep that screw from coming loose because usually what happens is these screws come loose and then that's what ends up um, causing the hinges to break because it starts wobbling so sorry I'm doing this a little bit off camera because I don't want to drip it on the computer but uh, we're just gonna get a little bit of red thread locker on there okay just like that and then we're gonna put this screw back in okay and this side, let's see, does this go into metal or plastic? I think that goes into a metal thing. So we'll also add thread locker to there, okay? You don't use much, very little. Okay, and then we're just gonna put this screw back in. Okay, so we'll put that screw back in. We're gonna remove the battery here to make it safer to work on because we might actually have to take the screen out. Actually, why did I put thread locker? I might have to actually take that out. Okay, well, it's not gonna harden right away, so we're gonna actually take the screen out completely first. Okay, so we'll get all these four screws out, or actually, I guess there's only um, three. I don't know why one screw is missing here. Uh, maybe it fell out or something, and then there's one up in the middle up top here, okay? Be careful not to drop the screws on the inside. So there we go, we got those screws out. Let's go ahead and lift the battery up. Let me actually get a thumbnail here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We'll get this close up and we'll get a thumbnail. Okay, so that for a bit and then we'll get a thumbnail. Okay, let's get the battery out. So the battery model is HK6N5, if you need that. We're gonna take the battery out, so just lift up wherever you can. Okay, be very careful because the connector is right there. And then to disconnect this, so once you pull it back slightly, let me actually zoom in. I actually cut my fingernail on this finger a little bit, so it might be difficult, but you grab, go at the wings of these connectors, of this connector, and you kind of just wiggle it and pull. There we go, okay. So here you go, battery model HK, HK6N5. Excuse me. That's what the battery looks like. We're gonna set that aside for now. Okay, 
And then let's take a look what else we got. We're gonna carefully open up the computer. Let me actually, well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna open it first. And because the hinge is broken, I gotta be careful. I gotta actually hold this portion down to keep it from splitting open, okay? And then we're gonna press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. So you wanna do this to drain any residual power, especially since we're gonna be disconnecting the LCD LVDS connector. If you don't do that, you could actually fry the circuit board, the cable, the screen, or a combination of all three. So take the few seconds, just do that. All right, it's only 15 seconds. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna flip this over now. Um, let's see here. So we got all these cables. Actually, I guess we're gonna close this back up. I gotta be careful again because the hinge is broken and let's see what we got to remove so there's this cable here going to this that's for the USB port and the headphone jack okay then we got on this side the DC jack charge port connector that one looks like it goes underneath the hinge and plugs in under here which we will take a look at because we are gonna have to take that stuff out wireless antennas appear to go underneath here so my oh no 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 just kidding the wireless antennas go down here so one is right there you can see this there's a little like circuit board looking thing here with the copper same thing on this side so there's the black antenna and then the white antenna so that's nice we don't have to take that out to get the screen out but we do have to take this one out so let's get this screw out Okay, again, keep all the parts in order. All right, this one, it swings up slightly and then you can slide it over to the left, I believe. Let me see, why is it stuck? Oh, just kidding. It slides out this way. So it slides up or you rotate it and you pull it out. Oh, so it doesn't even need to slide actually. It just goes completely vertical up and then it goes down, right? Is that how it goes? Yeah, so this connector here you actually raise it completely vertical and then it comes out because it has this little that little hook right there okay so we'll set that aside all right we got the lcd lvds connector here it looks like um and this one it looks like you just pull it straight up and it pops out all right popped out very easily um we do have to take these two screws out but uh what i like to do is i like to open the laptop 90 degrees first okay so i'm gonna have to carefully open this up while holding the hinges down okay now that the laptop screen is about 90 degrees i like to hang it off the edge of the desk let me zoom out a bit here probably gonna see junk all over my desk but uh okay just like this we're gonna undo this big screw here okay there we go set that aside and then we'll undo the two screws here that we <laughs> put back with the uh, thread locker. Okay, those screws were actually holding quite tightly. Okay, so we'll get those two screws out. And after we get those two screws out, we should be able to just lift the screen up. All right, just like that. And there we go. The screen came out very nice and easy. Okay. All right, so I'll set that aside for now because I'll show you guys what else is inside of here. And then we'll go ahead and work on repairing the screen, the hinge that's broken off. Um, because it has the plastic separated and is cracked. All right, you got this connector here for the speakers. It has the wings. You can kind of wiggle and pull it out. The cable goes along here and goes to this one, the blue and white to this speaker. The red and black goes to this speaker. They both connect right there. All right, this cable, um, it has a little flip latch. So you actually go under here and then you can flip that latch up to pull this cable out. If you're not sure how to do that, I have videos showing on other uh, devices that do that so I recommend just watching more of my videos if you want to learn how to do all this kind of stuff I don't want to mess with things I don't need to because I don't want to risk damage it might seem like very simple and it won't get damaged but sometimes you disconnect stuff and it will cause damage so I don't want to mess around it unless I need to you got the fan connector right there okay the fan obviously is right there with a few screws holding it in place um, you got the m.2 looks like m.2 ssd here all right um, I don't know why they use this tiny one. You can actually use a full-sized one, but then you'll have to remove this metal adapter plate. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right, but this does look like a M.2, yeah, it's M.2 PCIe NVMe. It does say Gen 3, Gen 3 X2, but uh, it shouldn't matter. You can use a newer one and it's usually backwards compatible. Oops, was I going out of view? But uh, here you go. Yeah, that's M.2 PCIe NVMe. And this thing is kind of like a thermal pad thing. All right, then you got the USB-C port secured with this metal bracket to help keep it in place better. Here you can actually see the DC jack charge port. It's held in with one screw and it's super short, plugs in right there. Okay, uh, CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery is right here with the connector there. If you buy a replacement, make sure you plug it in uh, the right way. The red wire is actually going down towards the CMOS battery and the black wire is going up towards the USB-C port. Very important. If you flip it upside down, you can actually damage your motherboard. Touchpad, trackpad connectors or cables right here has this little flip latch to uh, release it. Same thing with this little cable here that goes to. I have a feeling this is for the fingerprint reader. Um, yeah, FP1. So fingerprint reader. All right, and I think that's about it. This one's also for the USB port. Has that flip latch that you can flip that little metal bar up, and then you can pull that out. And I think that's about it. Speakers aren't held in with screws. They're held in with like these little rubber pieces and then you can just pull it up. But again, I'm not going to mess with it. Um, there's four screws for the trackpad or actually five. There's one in the middle here. So you can probably take the touchpad out if you take those screws out. Um, but yeah, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the screen and see if we can repair it. I'm going to set this aside for now. We'll grab the screen here. Here you can see the hinge that's kind of broken. You can see when I pull on it, it's like wobbling like this. Um, this side is okay, only this side is bad. Um, so we are gonna have to carefully pull up the bezel. It looks like there's adhesive holding it in place. So you do wanna be careful doing this. Um, this kind of repair is a little bit risky. Hopefully the screen will be intact okay. Um, the way I remove the screen, it's not too visible, but usually I'll like twist the bezel that so the inside goes up and then this side goes down and in towards the center and that makes it easier to remove, okay? So we don't technically need to remove the whole bezel, but uh, let me see. If it's coming out easily, then we'll remove it. So it looks like it's going, so I'm just going all the way around doing the same uh, thing, twisting it so that I can undo the clips. And then the other issue is the adhesive down here. That's usually a pain, but it looks like it's coming out not too bad. Okay, so I'm just sliding my finger in between to release the adhesive. And it looks like it came out relatively easily. So it came out just like that. We'll set this bezel aside. Okay, actually worked out quite nicely. Then you can see this plastic piece just fell off. Um, it looks like on both of them, they broke off. So there's like this, focus on it, please. You can see where they kind of had melted parts that stick to the back of the bezel. So it's actually supposed to stick to the back of the bezel. I don't see a way that I can put that back because none of the plastic that holds it is there anymore. So I don't know how I would, I would have to just like Hold it there and use some super glue or something but uh I don't know I kind of feel like that's a little risky if it doesn't work right I don't know I can I can try but I don't think it's gonna work right so I'm gonna leave that alone and the bezel itself will just hold it in place okay um, so here we have this piece that's all broken here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these screws out, okay? And most likely if I put some strong epoxy or glue underneath, it will hold it really well. I don't know what caused it to come, uh, well I do know why, why it came loose like that, it's because it's not a good design. And the leverage is all, like, this is too short. So it's kind of like if someone grabs your finger and just like twists it like that, it's very easy to twist that way. But it's a lot harder to twist like this way because you have, um, more leverage kind of so this when it twists it's very easy to like this one see how this is so long and this one's so short 
it's kind of like this one has a mechanical advantage because it's like levering this out so usually they should have the metal going up along the side but in this case they didn't do that so actually it looks like someone might have tried to fix it before um that's gonna be bad actually um also i noticed this screw is loose that's not a good thing so this screw was loose <laughs> this screw is also loose and again like i said when these screws come loose a lot of times <coughs> that's what ends up causing it to break because when it's so like if you hold tight and you do this it's not as bad as you have a loose and then you like twist it like that and then the thing has like two points where it kind of will break it like that instead of like the whole thing doing like that okay and that's why it breaks so we're gonna add some thread locker to this side to hopefully prevent that side from breaking in the future but again it's still a bad design because there's too much leverage on one side and not enough on the other and that's usually why these end up breaking but uh I'm gonna take that down okay I've got this one. Take that down. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then the last one here. Okay, we'll grab that. We'll add some more thread locker. And then we'll tighten this down. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so this side, whoever worked on it, I don't know what kind of glue they used, but it's not good enough, and that's why it broke. So, basically what we gotta do, we gotta use a better glue, and then we need something to just sit sit on top of it so that it can weigh itself down. Um, the thing is, how am I gonna keep this pried up? I might have to actually just use the hinge to help pry this up. You can see this goes up like that. And whatever glue they used, it just cracked off. So pieces of that glue is breaking off. Okay. So basically, I'm going to have to get the glue underneath there, and hopefully it will hold really well. Um, again, I think the easiest way might be if I just put this on there, and then I can use that to help leverage it up. Um, and then I need a way to just smash this down to keep it flat. Um, the problem is that's going to take like a lot of force, a lot of weight. So I don't know what I can use to smash that down. Um, but I'm going to get some glue here. Maybe I can use a clamp. that get some more there get this tightened down good second one more glue or sorry more thread locker okay all right so JB weld it takes 15 hours to set completely so this kind of thing it's not like a quick like um, repair let me get the um, clamp real quick and I'll be back all right I'm back so with some help of some popsicle sticks and a clamp I'm gonna basically put this over the hinge and then clamp that in place but uh, let me add some of the glue first and then we will reassemble or we'll clamp it down and let it sit for at least 15 hours. It has to sit, um, but we're just going to clamp it overnight. And then that should be enough that I can put it back together and then start working on it. All right. So we have some JB Weld here. And it looks like we're not going to really need too much of the stuff. So let's just grab that and we're going to stir it up again. We don't need too much. Um, we're going to get the two parts, white and black, um, and I don't know where my paper towels went. Somebody took them, so let me get a paper towel roll, and I'll be back again. Actually, I have a little piece here. 
So I'll use this because I just need it to wipe up these stuff. All right, so we're gonna get this. And again, it doesn't look like we need too much. We basically um, need to get it under this whole piece and then put it back together. But it's gonna be very thin. So this is already way too much, but that was what was stuck in the lid. So I'm just gonna use that. Okay. Just like that. Set the white one aside. Okay, then we'll get the black one. And we'll do the same thing. Oh, this one also overflowed. Okay, same thing. We'll just scoop this stuff up. This always ends up like too much here. Okay, there we go. And let's get this. We want about equal parts. Looks like there's a lot more of the white one than the black, so let me get more. And it just might be how it's kind of smeared. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get the stuff back in the tube. Okay. There we go. Oh, this on my hand. Remember that? I think it was leaking. Okay, there we go. Got the second part mixed in. Or not mixed in, but plopped out. I need to wipe my hand. I don't want that goopy stuff. I think it's separating. Okay, so now we're just gonna stir the two parts together, just like this. Mix it up. that. Make sure it's mixed really well. Oops. So I, you can use whatever to mix it on. I use this because I can look at the bottom and make sure it's kind of stirred up well. Okay. All right. And now we got a good mix. You can see how it's this grayish color. Okay. You can usually tell it's mixed properly by seeing what color it is. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna tilt this up. I'm gonna put some pressure on the back of this hinge to lift it up, and we're gonna just get this epoxy underneath there. Okay, we wanna get it all underneath. Okay. All right, lift that up again, and get all of that stuff under there. Get under the whole thing. We're gonna get some more. Just get it, keep getting it under there. Be careful not to bend this back too far. We don't want it to like snap off. Okay, but we do wanna try and get it all the way to the back of the hinge. And just coat that everywhere. Okay, a little bit more. And we'll get it at the bottom here. All right, then as we close it up, you should see the stuff ooze out, okay, like that. But uh, that's probably a little too much, so I'm gonna have to scrape that up. Let me actually... <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this down. You can see it oozes out, so I'm gonna kind of scrape that up. And we can actually push this stuff to go further up here onto the hinge area itself. Okay. And one other thing I like to do is I like to cover, um, we can try it without the clamps, but we'll see. It depends if the clips of the bezel are good or not. So now we kind of have that more spread out. Some of it's going to be too high, so let me try and take some out. Okay. Just like that. Okay. <clears throat> so one other thing I like to do, 
um, but I'm going to actually need some scissors. So let me go grab my scissors and I'll be back. We're going to use some plastic wrap or ceram wrap to cover that area. And then when we put the bezel on, it will basically hold it flat and keep it smooth. All right, so let me do that and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So let's put up a piece of this plastic wrap. Okay. Basically, you just want it to cover the area where the stuff is going to um, kind of ooze out of. So that way it won't get uh, fuse the two layers. Okay, so I'm going to cut this up. Set the excess aside. Okay, and it's okay to make it stick out over the edge. So just like this. Okay, see that? We're having it go out. That's fine. We can take it out later. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to grab the bezel here. And we're going to get this in place. We are going to have to snap the other piece in as well, the two bottom parts. Oops, I got the stuff on my finger. Okay, let me actually zoom out a little bit here. <clears throat> now we can actually snap the bezel into place, so just click all of that in. Okay, and I'm pushing on the outer edges of it, okay? you're wondering how I'm doing this so that's how it makes it clip in easily oh why is this clip like screwed up it's not lined up right okay I don't know what's going on here something's wrong with this oh. <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh how's that clip that clips not all right so let's get that out I think the thing is somebody worked on this before and then left all this messed up. Okay, so we're going to go on this. Work our way down. Yeah, I think somebody worked on this and messed it up before. All right, anyways, we're going to now get this piece here. So get that in. Uh, let's see if I can show this better. Okay, so we're going to have to lift this plastic up, tuck this one in there. It's going to be a little bit tricky. It might help to actually pop up the side edge a little bit again, so we can pull it up out of the way. And we can kind of get this in there, just like that, and get that to stay in place. Okay, then we'll go up the edge, click all of that in. I think the clips that are supposed to hold here broke off, so we got to be careful with that. We're probably going to have to use the, um, what do you call, the, the clamp to hold this down. Um, the problem is these clips, see, since they're broken, it doesn't stay clamped down. And also I think they bent the metal here. So I'm just going to clamp this down the best I can. Um, and then we're going to go on this side as well and put this piece back in as well, obviously. Okay, so we're going to pull this up again. So let's pop this back out and then pull this slightly back so we can get this piece in. Okay, so tilt that and get that in. I think the previous person that worked on this snapped this off. But uh, there we go. We can go ahead now and click all this back in. Okay, that side actually clicks in, and we're going to click all of this down. Okay, and again, this side doesn't stay because they it looks like they dropped it and it dented this corner here. So, there's not really a way to make it permanently go back in the right way because of that break. Um, but yeah, here we go. We'll have it like that. We'll get something to clamp it down. Um, I think it'll help to have these popsicle sticks here like this actually. And the problem is this isn't lined up right, so we're going to have to have it like that. Okay, maybe a second one here. No, that's too tall. Okay, so we'll have it like that. And then we will just clamp this down here. And we'll have to let this sit again for 15 hours. So that's how long it takes for this epoxy to set properly. Okay, I'm going to have to open this up more. 
and we're just gonna get this and we're gonna clamp it in place okay just like this so this clamp is squeezing over the hinge area just like that and we're gonna have to let that sit um, basically overnight and once it sits once it sets then we can go ahead and unclamp it and it should be holding itself together okay so leave it like that and I'm gonna let this sit overnight like this and then we'll put it back together all right I'll see you guys later all right so I'm back let's go ahead and take this out it's probably been a little over 12 13 hours now so hopefully should be set enough that I can put it back together I wouldn't put it into use right away but uh should be yep plenty strong so both sides you can see I can do that but again um, you don't want to move it around too much until it sets for at least 15 hours we're gonna get this and we're gonna put it back together so <clears throat> let's see if we can do it without having to lean it off the edge of the desk we're gonna have it like that okay and then we're gonna tilt this up and get that in place and it works then we're gonna slowly carefully put the hinges down okay and it looks like it's good all right hopefully it's in the right spots okay um and then the hinges let me see because i took stuff out now i'm going to confuse myself um maybe i need to re-watch my video real quick to make sure i get the right hinge, uh, right screws in the right spot because i think this one if i remember correctly only had one screw and then this one had these two so i'm looking at my screw layout and I'm like where did they go so yeah give me a second I'm gonna rewatch my video real quick and I'll be back all right so I was right um, from looking at the pattern of my screws this one the bigger one goes here right is it not sitting 100% properly I feel like this screw is a little bit short for this but that's where I saw it, so I'm putting it back where I found it. I have a feeling the um, previous person that worked on this probably put the wrong screws in the wrong spots. So, I don't know. But I'm putting it back where I found it, so that's how I found it. There. And then this one was here. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to have one of the other screws, not the, the big one like this. <clears throat> Uh, let me see if I can actually swap it because I feel like this one isn't too good of a hold here It's very loose. So it's probably gonna be this other screw, but uh, if you open yours up check it. Let me know. Okay Actually, okay, maybe it's not it looks like it uses a smaller screw like that. So maybe that was the right one Hmm Interesting um the other one had oh i think i see okay so we'll take that out and wait that was for the battery huh i don't know i feel like that screw needs to be longer but okay well we'll just put it back how they had it no oops i'm mixing up the wrong one sorry so I'll put it back how they had it because that's how they had it. So this big screw was there. Make sure that one's actually, I'm going to put some thread locker to make sure it stays because I don't want that to come loose. And I should actually put the thread locker on all the screws. Okay. This thread locker, it got clogged. So I'm going to squeeze it. Just get a tiny bit there we go and we'll tighten that into place just like that <clears throat> okay then we're gonna get these two back out and also add some thread locker to those because we want to make sure they don't come loose okay again it's very important because if these come loose that's where it ends up causing damage because it starts prying it out especially with the bad design okay there we go okay we're gonna flip this thing back around 
Okay, we had the battery here. <clears throat> Do we need to put any other stuff? Let's put. make sure to put the LCD LVDS cable before you put the battery back in. Okay, very important. Just line this up. Let me see if I can give you guys a close up. Okay, line the connector up. And then we're just going to push it down. Just like that. <clears throat> okay, we got this metal plate. Again, it goes vertical like this, so that this L bracket goes between the motherboard and the connector. Just like this, and then we swing it down. Just like that, okay? And this piece can kind of slide around, so I'm not 100% sure how far up or how far down, but as long as you can get the screw in here, you should be good. Okay, there we go. All right, now we got the battery we're going to put back. Yeah, I think they lost one screw because this screw that they had is supposed to be for the battery that was that I put that goes that they put here. So I'm going to actually get a better screw to put in there. All right, we're going to get the battery back in. Just pinch both sides like that. Make sure you pull it in straight and then we'll get this in, okay? And again, I'm going to put that other screw where it belongs, which is holding the battery down. And I'm going to get a replacement screw to go in here because I feel like it's not gripping down as far as it should. And whoever worked on it before must have messed that up. I didn't think about it earlier because I was just taking it apart. But uh, yeah. All right. So we got this one here. Then they had this mini one in the center here. Okay, I'm going to take this one from that hinge out and put it where it belongs, here, holding the battery. Because these are all M2x2. Two two. This one should probably be like a 2x3 or something. I don't know which one's the, I think the length is the... So, I have a box of like random screws here. This one's a little longer, but I think it might need to be even longer than that. So maybe this one. And I think this screw is like a two by four. Okay, so we're gonna see if that fits, and it does. Okay, so this one should hold better. I'm gonna put some more thread locker. Come on. I'm just squeezing this thing pretty hard because it's clogged. There we go, and then we'll get that in there. Okay, there we go. Close up the thread locker, and let's go ahead now and put the bottom cover back on. All right, hopefully I already explained all the components inside. I believe I did, um, but I made that video yesterday, so we're just putting it back together with the epoxy JB Weld. It's important that you use... JB Weld, not some other random epoxy. Oh, this one had the broken screw mount. Um, you can try using some other random ones, but I'm pretty sure it's going to end up like breaking off, and then you're going to have some trouble in the future because if you try and fix it again after you did that, you're not going to be able to get that old glue out, and then it's going to always pop out. So always start with the right stuff. Don't mess around and use some cheapy junk glue, okay? If there's something better, let me know, but so far I found that works the best. Okay, just get all these screws back in, and we should be good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. And it works perfectly. The computer's turning itself on. I actually see the keyboard lit up. And there you go. So we should be good to go. That's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.